I have a certain plan for the cover of the journal. It's not very well thought through at this stage, but we shall see how it goes and where it will take us. So first of all, I have two uh, pieces of chipboard and this is uh, graphics medium weight chipboard. Both of the pieces measure the same and they are eight and three quarters by five and seven eighths. I have also printed uh, two page designs from the uh, Gothic Butterflies uh, digital paper kit from Victoria Designs. These are two of the patterns that I chose. I printed them uh, with borders on um, thin printing paper and um, that's the paper that I chose. I'm going to wrap the um, chipboard with these papers and I will use I think glue stick for that because I do have a plan of sewing around the edges of the cover at a later stage so I hope that glue stick will be just enough to um, hold the paper and um, since it's thin again I think it should work fine so I'm going to apply glue to the whole surface of the chipboard and then attach it to the paper, leaving about um, three quarters to one inch wide flaps on all four sides. I trimmed the excess paper and this is what we have for now. I'm not yet uh, wrapping the flaps around the edges of the chipboard. I want to wait with it a little bit till I have a better idea of how I want um, my cover to look like. And now I want to move on to the outer spine of the journal to which both of the uh, covers will be attached. For um, this spine, I want to use a piece of corduroy. I have a piece which is, as you can see, about three quarters of an inch larger than the paper piece that I have here on all four sides. And the paper piece is just plain cardstock, not printing paper cardstock, but not a very thick one either. And it measures eight and three quarters by two inches. You can also see the measurements in centimeters. Um, so um, in the back here, I have just marked the um, center on the long side, which is four and three eighths of an inch away from either uh, top or bottom. And I have also marked the uh, center along the uh, narrow side. And um, I also have um, guidelines which are one inch away from the top and bottom. I am not sure if I am going to use them after all for um, any embellishments of the spine, but I have them for now and I thought I'd mention them um, to you as well. So I'm going right now to glue this piece down onto the fabric and again I'm going to use um, glue stick. I will also iron the piece later on to make sure that uh, the glue sticks better to the fabric. Now I want to take a ruler and to kind of prolong the edge line of the cardstock onto the fabric just like so and now I will use my scissors and cut along those lines like so
and then apply glue onto the cardstock for folding these flaps at the top and at the bottom and I will iron them one more time. I'm going to uh, cut the excess fabric at the top and at the bottom like so at a slight angle and now I will get back to my covers. I want to first of all uh, trim the corners. Make sure that you don't trim the paper right next to the corner of the chipboard and you leave some of the paper there for being able to cover the corner of the chipboard itself. Okay, so here are both of my covers. This is going to be the uh, front cover and this one is going to be the back. I will take my distress ink and distress the edges of both covers now. Now, if you want to add any um, labels that you'd like to stitch on uh, to the back cover, um, do it now while you still have only one simple layer to work with. I think I'm going to uh, stitch my um, label to the back and it's done. Let's put the covers aside and get back to our outer spine. I don't know how it will turn out but I want to add some stitching and some beads and some um, twill tape to the spine. Now the twill tape will be stitched onto the spine um, along its edges and actually for the twill tape which in my case is one inch wide you're welcome just to take any one inch ribbon that you'd like to use on this project. Um, I will show the twill tape to you closer. That's the um, texture that it has and I think I'm not really sure what it is used for in uh, professional <laughs> sewing but I like to use it for embellishing my journals and also uh, for the closures on the covers it works well. I just want to show you an idea of how I do it and you're welcome to um, use the supplies that you have and maybe come up with something else. So um, I have created those lines that I previously showed you, the one which was one inch away from the top and bottom and then one in the very um, center of the cardstock piece. So uh, now if I want to attach the uh, twill tape, well of course it will be attached on the outside but I'm uh, just um, um, thinking about the measurements out loud and I will put the uh, twill tape pieces that I have on the inside of the spine for now just to um, give you a better notion of what I have in mind. So my twill tape will go like that on the spine and I made sure that I added more guidelines. The stitching that I'm going to add to the spine will be a decorative one and for um, stitching it really precisely we will need to do some more um, measuring. So the first set of uh, lines that we're going to mark will be um, at one quarter of an inch away from each other and also from the edges of the cardstock piece on the left and on the right like so. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six marks that we're going to sketch on our paper. I'll do the same on this side. 
just like so. And I'm actually going to connect them like that so we have a grid now in the back of our um, journal spine now before i move to the next set of guidelines and marks i want to take a pen of another color and mark the uh, lines which were one inch away from each other that we have created before just so that i don't mix them up with the next lines that we are about to create now so i will take a red pen and just separate them from of the rest of the pencil lines. Now I'm going to create more lines for further stitching that we're uh, going to, to do and I will start from the first red guideline. I will mark one at half an inch, then at one and a half, two and two and a half, then at uh, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, and six and a half. And I will repeat them on the opposite side so that I can connect both of the marks together and make sure that I have very straight horizontal lines later on. Okay, I will connect them. For creating patterns, you really need measurements. So um, let's get to it now. Uh, you will need your poking tool. Here we go. And I also um, use this piercing mat under um, the uh, piece of fabric and paper that I'm going to poke through. So we are going to poke six holes on each horizontal line that we have. I'm poking here one, two, three. Then on the central one, I do not poke any holes. And then I keep on going four, five, six. Okay, so let's keep on going up to the third red line. Now, I will not poke any holes along the line which is right in the middle. I will keep on going from the fourth red line up to the very end. At the end, we will have six columns of holes and an even number of rows. We have 14 rows and six columns of holes. Next I'm going to take my twill tape pieces and apply glue to each one of them. Um, not all the way till the very edges but somewhere in the center so that I know that they will glue down nicely. And now these lines that, by the way, I uh, prolonged onto the fabric, and I'm talking now about the red lines, will help me line everything up and make sure that I glue them down in the correct places. And now I will take this to my sewing machine. This is what I have. Let's choose which colors of thread we will want to use for our decorative stitching. 
So I have printed the pages for my journal, at least the uh, patterned ones from the kit. And I think I will go with two colors of the threads for the decorative stitching on the spine. I will use this dusty pink and this silver gray. Before we actually get to stitching, let's make sure that we repoke the holes which happen to be in the centers of the twill tapes at the top and at the bottom of the spine. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. And the same thing here, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we can see them on this side as well. And I think that I will repoke the ones which are close to the edges too, uh, just because it will be easier for me uh, to see them. Yeah, something like that. Let's do it on the other end as well. And now I think we're good. I took a thread which is about 40 inches long. I think it will be enough. If not, we will uh, connect uh, another thread to the existing one. So I will start with my dusty pink color and I will start from the uh, top hole um, from the right hand side. I will thread it through and I will take a clip and hold thread on the uh, fabric piece that I'm working with. And then I will have uh, stitches that look like X's or crosses at each one of the uh, columns on the left and on the right hand side. It's not important how the back will look like. The most important thing is that um, at the end of the process you will have two lines of um, of X's in this row and this row. I think I will tie my thread here. So to tie a thread you just want to make sure that you secure it and tie it with uh, some of the threads that you have already uh, stitched in your pattern. Now I will take another piece of thread which is 40 inches long like before because um, the previous 40 inches were enough just to stitch this top part on the spine. Let's also make sure that we take care of the uh, thread tail that we had left at the top. I'm done with my first color and two uh, sets of cross stitching, very exaggerated one I would say, uh, in dusty pink color. So now we have to uh, create another uh, column of stitching with our second color. So I start from this hole right here and our uh, stitch in the uh, gray color will be of another shape. It will be a very stretched looking one like so and it will go from the top down to the bottom between the pink cross stitching rows.
Okay, so I'm done with the stitching in pink and gray. Now I think I want to add some beads here in the center. So I have just a beige string for my next thing that I want to do. So I think you can decide where exactly you want to have beads. And I'm going to use the beads of the size six in gold. I will stitch them, I think, in here. So I will, first of all, make sure that I leave a tail at the top. Okay, and now I will string my bead and go back through that same hole in there. Let's see how it looks like. Do we want to have it like so? Let's make sure that we don't twist the string. Yeah, I think it's fine. So I will keep on going. And I still have those lines in the back so I can see where I need to poke the next hole. And I just want to make sure that I don't have any knots. I'll take the next bead and again go back through the same hole and attach this second bead here. It looks nice. Uh, yeah, so I will keep on going and get back to you once I'm done. I think this is enough for me. If you want to add more, you are welcome. This way you will be able to create a unique pattern that only you will have on the spine of this journal. But I think I'm done and I will uh, secure the thread as usual in the back. Make sure that I tie nice and secure knots. And then we will attach the spine to the covers. I decided that I want to stitch along the top and bottom edges of um, the spine first and then something is missing here. So what are our options? We can stamp something, we can um, maybe embroider something, we can also add more beads, maybe in a certain pattern or way. And we can also take a paper embellishment and use it on the spine or even a metal one if you have one. But I decided to go with something from the paper collection. So there were a few sizes of different butterflies. I chose um, this one and I already uh, distressed uh, around the edges and now if I only glue the butterfly like that it might be that um, over time since it will not have any support behind the wings um, it can either um, tear or it can just peel off um, I could also stitch around all the edges and like attach it to the spine completely but the edges are um, not that simple to stitch around so I hope that what I'm going to do will be okay so I have a piece of that same um, pink material that I used oh sorry I was out of focus so um, I have a piece of that pink material uh, corduroy that we used for um, wrapping up um, the cardstock piece for the spine and I also have a leftover piece of um, um, simple cotton fabric from one of the previous projects. I think I want to take this butterfly and um, first of all just um, 
glue it down in the middle to the layer of corduroy and then I want to take this piece of fabric and glue it in the middle again and now I want to um, use my really good sharp scissors that will help me cut around the edges of the butterfly and I want to leave a border about maybe one eighth of an inch maybe a little bit less uh, all the way around so that we'll make sure that even though we are not going to stitch the wings of the butterfly all the way down um, to the spine it will still have some kind of the support behind them and it will also create interesting layering and dimension on our spine so I'm now going to find the center oh, let's clip let's use some clips for folding the flaps in because then we will better see where the middle of this um, section of the spine is okay I will fold at the top and at the bottom and I think it will be good enough to hold it in place so now I also can see where the center goes uh, because I stitched the beads in there I will attach my butterfly here and now I'm going to take this whole piece to the sewing machine and add the stitching along the butterflies body only right here and also as I previously uh, mentioned at the top and at the bottom of the piece and I will be back to show it to you okay so here we go the stitching at the top and at the bottom don't forget to uh, either tie double knots after you pull the threads to the back uh, or just secure the threads with a little bit of glue and then the butterfly has also been stitched in the center I have added some glue to the threads here in the back as well now I think that I want to add a little bit more glue between the wings of the paper butterfly and the first layer of fabric and attach them a little bit more just to make sure that they really are not that fragile the spine is finally done we can move to attaching the covers it will be a good idea for us to um, distress the edges of um, this piece because then we will better see where exactly the covers um, need to be glued down we need to apply the glue about half an inch in from this edge of the cover that will be close to the spine for some reason I just prefer to apply the glue onto the paper layer and not to the fabric I find it easier let's take this cover and it's our front cover here and I will line this up with that distressed inked line on the fabric fold and glue this whole thing down I will do the same on the other side
set this piece aside to dry. Once it's dry, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch along these edges, which are close to the spine, right on top of the chipboard. Now, you don't have to add stitching, but I just like how it looks on uh, my projects, so that's what I do. Here, my cover is looking like this at a current stage. I have added stitching. I have pulled out the uh, thread tails to the inside of the cover and secured them with a bead of glue just along the uh, stitching. Now I also think that it's a good time to take something round and try and shape our spine a little bit better. I also have this super small piece of pink leather and I want to use it here on the spine at the top. So I think I'm going to uh, glue it down and then stitch again here on top just to make sure that it stays um, there in place. Now I think I'm quite satisfied with how it looks. I want to add flaps at the top, at the bottom, and on the side so that they cover all of the pages and the journal looks more like a folder. For uh, creating the flaps, I am going to use a lightweight chipboard that you uh, find on cereal boxes. And that's the cereal box that I'm going to um, upcycle. And uh, I have here two pieces that will serve as a top and the bottom flap and I'm going to uh, also explain a few more things to you before I uh, prepare the flap for the long side. So uh, the uh, pieces of chipboard that I have here measure five and a half inches by five and I wrote here then decide because for us it is important. I want the uh, bend side to be here so that over time these uh, chipboard pieces don't weirdly fold or break, although I am going to cover them on the outside with the same fabric that we used on the spine and on the inside they will have paper. When I'm saying that this is the bandy side, I'm sure you heard about the grains of the paper. So I have here the second half of the uh, cereal box that I used for uh, creating these pieces. So this piece is a great example that I want to use for showing you what I mean exactly. So you can see that if I bend it this way, it bends really flexibly and uh, I don't have any problem. But if I'm trying to bend it this way, um, it just doesn't cooperate really. It just doesn't. And if I will keep on pushing, I will have a very ugly um, fold right here in the middle. So uh, when you cut your uh, pieces for the shorter flaps, make sure that the bandy side will be the one that will measure uh, five inches each time. Okay, and then let's put it aside for now. And then you will uh, trim it to five and a half on the side, which is not flexible. Then you will take your scoreboard and on the colorful side and the five inch side also being at the top, you will score it one inch and at three inches. Then you will flip it to the uh, plain side 
and you will score at every one eighth of an inch between the one inch mark and the three inch mark. And you will also uh, round the corners on the side which is five and a half inches long. And that's what you're going to do. The very same thing with both of the pieces. Now we get to the uh, longer piece that we're going to need for our uh, project. And again, this is the bandy side, but as you can see, I will want this flap to be bendable on this side just as it goes, but it not, it's not long enough for me to use. It is only, how long? About seven and a half inches, and I will need eight and a half for my journal. So what I'm going to do is this. I will first of all trim it to five inches like that. Now this side is still bending nicely, okay? And then I will measure. So I have here seven and a half and I need eight and a half. So that means that I need to check here. I will trim from here one inch strip and then shorten it to five inches long like this. Now they both bend the same way and I just need to, uh, to connect them together and for that I am going to use painter's tape. I'm going to round the corners on one of the long sides of this piece as well. And I'm going to score this piece the same way as I scored the uh, smaller flaps. On the five inch side, I'm going to score it one inch at three inches and then I will flip it to the plain side facing up and then I will score on the plain side at every one eighth of an inch from the mark of one inch to the mark of three inches. With the plain side facing up you will fold along that very very first score line and have your one inch flap and then on this side you will also fold along the very first score line. You can use the ruler for this as well, but that's what we are going to have. Now we need to get a 45 degree cut on these flaps that will help us to attach uh, each one of the pieces to the inside of our cover and we do this so that we don't have any um, excess of the chipboard in terms of um, thickness and bulk. I will need some more of that pink fabric that I used on the spine 
and I'm going to cover my pieces with this fabric. Now, I don't need it to go all the way to the edge of the one inch wide flap on this side. I, I need it to go uh, about halfway in, but I also need enough of the fabric to be able to wrap it around the edges of the chipboard piece. Since this side to which I'm going to apply the glue is very shiny with the printed images on it and I don't think that the glue stick will do the job even if I'm ironing it. I just want to be sure that um, the fabric will nicely attach to the printed chipboard here. So I am going to open a new bottle of my beacon glue that, as a matter of fact, I rarely use. And I will start to apply it somewhere from the half of this one inch wide flap just so that I know that it, it is covered in there and then I can hold it by the area which is not covered by glue and apply it to the rest of the area there. To be able to wrap the fabric around these corners, I'm going to cut. First of all, let's trim a little bit more. I think it's too much. Okay, I'm going to cut a bit away from the place where the curve starts on this side and also on this side. And as you can see, I'm not going all the way to the edge of the chipboard. And then I'm going to cut out little triangles here, like so. And I will do the same thing next to this corner. We're going to see, so you see from where to where you need to apply the glue here to be able to glue down the super easy flap on this side. And that's what we will do first of all. Now we can also glue down the little triangles and wrap our corner. You might need to use your bone folder for that. It will just be easier. You will be uh, gluing the uh, triangle somewhere in the center first. And when you glue it down, just make sure that you kind of pulling it towards the uh, center of the chipboard piece, towards this part of it, okay? So now you have this corner ready and we'll do the same on this side. That's the second corner. Next, I'm going to apply glue in this area and fold this section over. Make sure that it glues down nicely. Same thing on this side. Fold and use your bone folder if you need to. Make sure that we glue it down, okay? And now we will have to trim from this corner so that we have less of the fabric 
bulk in there before you glue the flap down it might be worth adding just a bit of glue to that same to that very corner where both of the corners will kind of meet once you fold everything okay just for the fabric to stick nicer uh, to the chipboard and then we will add more glue and fold this section of the fabric and glue it down to our chipboard already looks nice and we'll do the same on this side just make sure that you use your nice sharp scissors this is how you are going to cover with the material of your choice three flaps that we have prepared from a lightweight chipboard. We are going to cover this section now with the plain paper and then we're going to stitch along the edges here and maybe even here. Again we are going to distress the edges for the uh, same look first of all that we had on the spine and also for um, better visibility of all the folds before we add the stitching. My flaps are ready for the next step which will be covering them with paper. Now with the paper we will do the same thing and again please mind the uh, more flexible bandy side on the pattern paper that you are going to use for the reverse of the flaps. You are going to cut two pieces of the same size which will be um, five and three eighths by four and a half and for this flap you are going to need a piece that will be four and a half inches by eight and three quarters. I have prepared my papers for matting the inside of each one of the flaps. That's the pattern that I chose for the smaller flaps and that's the one for the uh, bigger one. Make sure that you position the paper correctly okay because one of the flaps will fold out up and one of the flaps will fold out down that's important because you have to round the corners the same way as you did on the base flaps and now here I need to round the corners at the bottom. We're also going to round our corners here. Uh, rounded the corners of our papers and we have them ready. Now I want to distress the edges of the papers and as I might have mentioned I would like to also distress the edges of the fabric side of the flap. Now I did that and I want to trim the corners on this side so I'm going to uh, line up the paper on top of the flap making sure that I have even borders on three sides there and then I'm going to mark with a pencil where I want to um, cut the corner off and it will be I can see where the edge of the chipboard goes under the paper so I can make a tick mark about 
uh, the same distance away that I have the borders here so that when I trim the corner along those marks I really have the border which seems the same as the rest of the borders are and I will do the same thing on the opposite side right here I will distress the edges of the paper on the cut off corners and I will glue this paper piece down to the flap making sure that I use uh, a good amount of glue Let it dry before you actually stitch around the edges. We will do the same um, things with the second flap and the third flap. And once I'm done stitching, I will get back to you to show the result. If you plan to add any embellishments, any maybe metal pieces or um, labels that you would like to stitch, to these spines of the flaps, do it before you cover them on the inside with the paper because you, of course, will want to uh, cover all the stitching or uh, the prongs of the breads or um, anything else that you will use for adding your additional elements. Once you have done uh, stitching, your flaps and the glue has dried, you will gently refold the flaps We have our flaps ready and I was thinking about the closure that I want to use for my journal and I decided to go with the simplest one, the uh, ribbon. So I have created a mark that will help me align up the ribbon in the correct place on the front of my cover and then on the inside of the back cover as well. This mark is at four and three eighths of an inch from either top or bottom of your page. In my case, each one of the pieces is 18 inches long and I'm attaching the first one onto the front of the cover and then the second one will be attached in the back on the inside. What I'm going to do next is I will add the stitching to the back cover only around the remaining three edges. Here we go. I stitched around three sides on the back cover. Now I will use my glue to glue down the flaps on the inside of the back cover. I think I'm going to start with the long flap and I will fold the flaps are fully dry now and I will fold the flap like so and then first of all I will see where exactly I'm going to glue it down. It will help you without adding the glue first. It will help you see how much space you need to leave at the top and at the bottom since this flap that we have created is a little bit shorter than the uh, cover of our future album. So right now I'm going to add the glue and line this fold up with the edge of the cover uh, leaving maybe about 1 16th of an inch between them between 
both of the edges like so. I will just make sure that I have uh, covered the stitching. Now when it's almost dry, I will unfold this flap and repeat the process for attaching each one of the top and the bottom flaps, lining up the sides of the flaps together making sure that they meet up nicely in the corner and the angled corners of the flaps will help us do that. While the glue is drying, let's uh, work on the inner binding which will actually hold the pages of our journal. I have here a piece of um, plain white cardstock and this piece measures, uh, let me find it, eight and a half by six. I have scored it at two inches on the left and the right side. And then, as usual, for the flexibility of the spine, I have scored the um, space between uh, two of the first score lines at every one eighth of an inch. Now, for attaching the signatures, I will use three whole pamphlet stitch, and I have already uh, pre marked the places for uh, the future holes and um, they are at so each one of these lines is at two and a quarter four and a quarter and at six and a quarter of an inch from um, each one of the top corners of the paper piece I have uh, sketched three horizontal lines and then uh, my journal will have three signatures and there will be half an inch spacing between each one of the signatures. So if you're going to measure from the top left corner of your uh, cardstock, the holes will be at two and a half, three and three and a half of an inch. Okay, so I made the marks at the top of the future uh, spine and at the bottom and then I was able to mark the actual holes for creating my um, stitch at the intersection of those lines. For covering the inside of the binding piece I will use a piece of cotton and this one is long enough so that I can wrap it around the edges of the cardstock at the top and at the bottom and it's also wide enough to cover the uh, two inch spacing um, in the center and also stand about maybe half an inch away from the folds on each side so altogether this piece in my case is about 11 inches by three inches and I'm going to use a glue stick for gluing it down to the paper and then I will iron it right away to make sure that the glue sticks nicely. Now I want to stitch as usual at the top and at the bottom to secure this piece of fabric on top of the paper like so. 
top and bottom. I think I want to add just some extra line of stitching along the long edges of the fabric, but the stitching will not go too close to the fold itself because I don't want it to be visible anywhere. I plan to cover it later on with another piece of paper on top that we're going to glue to the inside of the front and back covers. I hope this makes sense. So I'm just going to add more stitching uh, here and here. And it's done. Now I think I can sleep tight at night. I will now poke through the holes that I marked. We need to create some guidelines that will be two inches away from the edges of the lining paper that we used here on the spine. So the lines stand exactly two inches away from the edges of this white paper in the center and you don't need the line to go from the very top of the page to the very bottom just somewhere here in the center so that later on you can line the edges of your binding with those guidelines and make sure that you um, have it all um, nicely centered okay so that's something that I wanted to say before we continue working on our flaps right here. I want to add some brads for securing the flaps on the cover. I will first create a super faint pencil line, which will be three eighths of an inch away from the edge of the cover. And I think I can do it on all three sides already so that we don't get back to it. The line is very, very faint because I will have to erase it later on once I'm done attaching the breads. And now I will measure one and a quarter of an inch and make a tick mark on that previous guideline. Now the distance between both of those is three and a half inches. So at one and three quarters of an inch, I will make another tick mark. These measurements are correct for the short flaps. Here on the long flap, we will also mark one and a quarter inch away on that guideline from the top and the bottom corners. And in between, I think I will, there is six and a quarter uh, inch in between. So that means that at uh, three and one eighth, I will mark in the center. This will be a place for the bread that will also additionally secure our ribbon in place. And then here, I think I will just mark about one and a half of an inch away from the uh, tick mark uh, right here. Okay, so I have five uh, tick marks for poking the holes and that's what I'm going to do now. The prongs of the breads, when you flatten them on the inside of the cover, they will go parallel to the edges of the flaps. I want us to get back to the inner binding and um, line it up now between the guidelines that we have created and also make sure that you have 
even spacing at the top and at the bottom from the edges of the cover itself. And now I want you to use either a bone folder or just your uh, fingernail for embossing the edges of the flaps on the uh, paper flap, like so. We want to see where exactly we will have to trim the uh, paper flap so that we don't uh, create more bulk on this cover. Now that I have the outlines visible, I can uh, cut out those pieces. While you hold this piece like so, just measure the um, area which is left in here. In my case, it's about two and seven eighths of an inch by, well, let's say six and a half. So I will take the leftover piece from that cereal box and I will cut an additional rectangle and level up everything so that when I glue an additional paper on top, I don't have to worry about it sinking down. And then I think we can put the whole cover aside for now while we think about the way of embellishing our front cover. I have printed my pages from the digital paper collection. There are 24 uh, page designs for your journaling pages. I printed them on both sides. That's why I have uh, 12 um, double-sided folded sheets in here. I just love the butterflies and I know the paper collection is called gothic butterflies. <laughs> My gothic journal will have a lot of pink. That's how I felt about it. I just love the uh, shades of uh, purple and dark pink and gray and I don't know, like all I saw there was more uh, pink than any other color. So I have printed my pages and um, yeah, I have 12 of them here. Then the uh, paper collection also had these beautiful file folder uh, page designs. There are three of them. So I have printed and cut out those guys. And I made sure that I uh, printed um, just some um, neutral background in the back so they're not uh, double layered. They're just printed on both sides and usually for my pages I use a uh, regular printing paper or something rather thin while for the rest of the ephemera pieces like the cutouts and uh, journaling cards and uh, labels and other elements I use cardstock. My journal will have three signatures. I think that uh, will work good in terms of the number of page designs that I have. And of course, as usual, I will have some uh, tea stained uh, papers in each one of the signatures as well as some of these vintage um, uh, telephone conversation <laughs> reporting forms and some um, graph uh, papers uh, in gray color I was able to find. I think it will look nice with the rest of the color tones um, of this collection. I also have some really tiny uh, graph paper sheets from another notebook that I had in my stash and I will just mix them um, uh, mix them up and um, build my three signatures from 
the selection of the papers that I have here. I might add some book pages as well. I will see how it goes. Now my signatures are currently assembled and stitched down to the inner spine of the journal that we have prepared earlier in this tutorial using three whole pamphlet stitch. I have uh, stenciled on some of the tea stain pages as well as um, other pages too and you can see that I have embellished my pages as well with different um, die cut pieces and um, ephemera pieces from the digital collection that we're working with today. I do not film the process of embellishing the pages because it takes me a very long time. But I will show you um, each one of the pages closer in the overview part of this tutorial. I will use my uh, glue and attach the inner spine with the signatures stitched to it to the uh, main cover of the journal by the outer flaps of this piece um, so that I am more comfortable doing this. I will remove that journaling card from uh, the pocket on the first page and now everything I do is really uh, look at the guidelines that we have previously uh, created and they are uh, two inch away from um, the um, edge of the um, chipboard covers and I am going to apply the glue to each one of the flaps and glue them down to the inside of the back and front cover of my journal. Not only I'm looking at the guideline, which I have created, the vertical one, on the inside of the back cover right now, but also I uh, want to make sure that I have equal um, spacing from the pages of the journal to the, uh, to the edge of the uh, spine of my book at the top and at the bottom. So that's uh, one more thing that you might uh, pay attention to when you glue your signatures down to the cover. Once this flap will be dry, we will be able to work on the second flap here. And before I will apply the glue there, I want to snip some more of um, this flaps corners. I will do it at a very slight angle and up to the uh, fold right here. Again, just slight angle and not completely up to the fold, about maybe a quarter of an inch away from where the actual fold starts like so and let's just make sure that our flap here is now attached to the cover. I think it is so I can add the glue now to this flap and glue it down along that guideline, the vertical one that I have on the inside of the front cover. And when I'm attaching this flap to the inside of the front cover, you can see that I am holding the signatures Let's wait till it dries. Make sure that you uh, play a little bit with the inner spine and the outer spine of your journal to make sure that they fit nicely together. It's time to think about the front cover of our journal. I have prepared a few pieces that I would like to use for 
uh, the front and um, this piece for example includes another um, piece of corduroy fabric that I used on the spine and on the flaps here. I stitched a piece of this pattern paper from the collection to the fabric and the piece of the paper measures four and one eighth in my case by about seven and three eighths. It really depends on what you will have. I think this was just a leftover piece, so I decided to go with it. I also want to secure the ribbon that I have glued down to the cover. Um, in the front with a little brad I think I'm going to glue down the fabric right on top of the uh, paper cover I will also add more brads in the corners, like so. I have four of them in each one of the corners to secure the fabric and the paper to the chipboard cover. Now I have also cut out a few more elements from the paper collection and I have added some gold foiled circles. This is how I saw the cover of this journal um, coming together. I have also cut out this butterfly from the um, ephemera sheets and I backed it with a piece of that corduroy fabric because I want to stitch it to the um, paper layer right here, maybe here even, I haven't thought about it yet. Once I stitch the butterfly to the paper, I will then glue everything down to the front of the cover like so. I think that I will add it at an angle still and not in the very center. So I have added just a little bead of glue um, to the center of that butterfly um, to hold it in place while I stitch it down to the paper layer. Okay, now it is stitched to the paper layer underneath and that's the little stitching line in the back. Now I'm going to apply the glue do the whole area in the back and glue all of the elements together to my front cover and this is how it looks so far I added another bread to the side of the label there I felt like I wanted to do that we can move on to embellishing the insides of the front and back covers. On the inside of the back cover I want to have a place for a few pencils, maybe pens and a ruler. I have never done that before but this is what I want to try and do now. So you can witness either my success or failure, I guess. So for uh, creating this pen's holder, I have uh, taken a piece of uh, lightweight chipboard. I have glued this chipboard piece to a piece of pattern paper from the collection, making sure that I leave little borders for wrapping um, them around the edges of the chipboard later on. Now I also made uh, the marks on the long um, edges of the chipboard piece and they are in the center of each one of the long sides. 
which is four and a quarter inch away from either top or bottom and you will also be able to see the measurement in centimeters there so now i want to connect both of those uh, tick marks and create a line in the back of this chipboard piece so that i know where i will have to attach a strip of fabric for securing an elastic that I'm going to stitch to the uh, chipboard and paper layers in the front. I have a leftover piece of um, the fabric from one of the previous projects. I will need to trim it to the same width as the width of our chipboard piece and glue it down on top of that line that we have created in the center. You can use either tacky glue or uh, fabric tack for that purpose. I will wrap this uh, chipboard piece with the pattern paper. I want to prepare a piece of elastic that I have here. That's the one I'm going to use. It is half an inch wide. It is of a white color. If you want, you could probably um, use some alcohol inks or uh, distress ink sprays before you stitch it down. I think I will go with plain white this time. So I'm going, first of all, to secure um, this elastic by uh, the um, side right here and I will use the glue again for doing it. I think I want to have here a ruler, maybe some pencils and some pens. So I have prepared a few pencils here. These are not necessarily the ones that I'm going to use in this journal, but for measuring the um, width of um, the um, elastic that will be needed for holding this pencil, I'm going to use uh, these ones about a quarter of an inch from the edge of um, the chipboard piece I'm going to stitch the elastic first of all and this will secure it in place and then I will start to measure further the width of the spaces for the next pencils and pens okay here we go this is the first stitch that we have created this is how it looks in the back i have uh, cut off the excess thread and just tied double knots to secure everything on this side i think i will have the ruler somewhere in here so i will put it there and then make a slight mark with a pencil and stitch the elastic to the chipboard on top of that line and I do want to make sure that I don't move the elastic too much from where it needs to be so maybe on this side I will secure it with a bulldog clip just to make sure that we're still uh, keeping to the center of this piece. So I'm going to stitch right here and get back. Once again, I pulled the uh, tails of the threads to the back, tied double knots, and let's now trim the axis. Okay, so that's the place for the ruler. We can keep on going. We can now measure the next uh, place for 
let's say a pencil and once again I just want to mark slightly where the stitching will have to be okay and if I don't want to do it every time let's measure now how, what's the distance that we have between um, the stitches here it's about three quarters of an inch so I can just keep on marking again and again right and stitch there and maybe when you stitch don't keep the elastic completely flat on um, on the chipboard when you stitch maybe try to add just a little bit to the thickness of the pencil or uh, the pen which is going uh, to be there so I'm going to uh, secure it like that and again just clip it with a bulldog clip from this side and then take it to my sewing machine and stitch on top of the marked line so this is how our next uh, stitched pencil spot looks like I will keep on doing the same for uh, the next three spots the same way I will make sure that I um, add um, just some more of the elastic before I stitch okay here I have a few spots ready some were more successful than others I'm going to stitch one more spot and get back here we go let's try it I think it works so let's leave another spot for a chubby pen okay so I will need to stitch right here again about maybe a quarter inch or a bit more from the edge of the chipboard and I will get back since it was already the last spot for a pen I made sure that I uh, stitched um, the elastic to the chipboard in the back when it was folded over now I can cut off the axis of the elastic that I had and um, the next step for me would be to stitch around the edges of the whole piece I usually stitch about 1 8 of an inch away from the edge it's done now not only the stitching has here a decorative function but it also makes sure that um, we even better uh, secured the elastic onto the chipboard piece so I will add a piece of painters tape to secure the tails of the threads in the back of this piece and I uh, am sure that you also understand why we added that piece of fabric in there to make sure that our stitches are secure and now I think we are ready to add a pretty decent amount of glue to the back of this panel and glue it down between the uh, flaps in the um, back cover of our journal like so once I glue this piece down I think I'm going to take a few heavy books and put them on top of this panel and just to make sure that everything gets glued down nicely in the end and then we will keep on working on the inside of the front cover 
For embellishing the inside of the front cover, we will also use a piece of lightweight chipboard that measures 5 and 5 eighths by 8 and a half, and we're going to cover it with the printed digital paper from the kit. That's the page design that I chose. And I also want to create clear pockets on this uh, panel. I like to use clear pockets. I use thin acetate for uh, creating them. I have a pack of transparency film um, sheets right here. <laughs> there are also lots of cutoffs, as you can see. I would suggest that you use a thinner acetate for this purpose. And for embellishing these clear pockets so that they're more interesting um, than just clear, I decided to use the same seam binding that I used for the closures of my notebook. And that's the uh, roll of um, light gray seam binding ribbon that I have. So I have just wrapped the ribbon around one edge of the acetate piece and stitched the ribbon onto the acetate to make sure that it stays in place. I did it for both of the pieces and as you can see uh, one of the pieces is wider than the other so the wider one measures two and a quarter by eight and a half and the uh, narrower one measures one and a quarter by also eight and a half. We're going to add eyelets to the um, edge of the acetate right on top of the ribbon. So first of all, we're going to uh, measure the center point uh, on top of the ribbon. I have already marked the place where I will set an eyelet, but um, it's going to be at four and a quarter from either um, of the edges of your acetate. Make sure that you don't include the ribbon into your calculations. I have left some uh, tails of that ribbon so that I could wrap them around the um, lightweight chipboard panel when I um, attach them to it so that it looks uh, better on the edges. I am going, first of all, to add an eyelet to the narrower piece right there. Like that. And now we need to do another little something before we add an eyelet to um, this edge of the wider acetate piece that we have. And for that, we first need to overlap our, um, our both pieces by about a quarter of an inch because that's, well, about that width. Um, is the area covered by the ribbon. If you don't want to uh, to do it with the ribbon, it will be easier to cover it with um, simple printed paper of any uh, designs that you can choose from the collection. You can also use washi tape for that. Um, but I decided to go with the ribbon. I don't want both of the pockets to go all the way to the edge of the uh, paper panel right here because uh, first of all I think it's unnecessary uh, in terms of the um, thickness of all the layers that we're going to have here in such case and also because it will be like less transparent there if both of them overlap uh, all the way. So I do want to have a um, larger pocket at the bottom and then I want to have two pockets at the top. So that's why I'm going to connect both of those acetate pieces together and overlap them just where the um, edge of the ribbon ends 
and I'm going to use a bulldog clip for holding them together and again I'm just trying to make sure that at least I'm um, doing it as straight as I can so that all of the edges um, stay straight at the top and at the bottom okay and now when I have that done I am going to punch a hole in there in both of the um, acetate pieces let's cut this little bit off using scissors and now I'm going to put an eyelet through the edge of the first layer of acetate and it will also go through the second layer of acetate right there and let's try to hold it in place and then set that eyelet in there like so can be a little bit tricky so just take your time now both of these um, acetate pieces are connected together and we can keep on uh, attaching them to our um, to our paper panel and lightweight chipboard panel so I'm going to first of all use the bulldog clips for holding the um, acetate panels down on top of the paper and now I can flip it to the back side and add some glue in order to secure the um, tails of the ribbon I will now take the whole panel to my sewing machine and stitch around the edges of it and get back to show you the result. It is now finished. I stitched around this panel. That's how the back looks like. Sorry about the glare. So we have a wider pocket here at the bottom and also two smaller pockets at the top so you can put smaller uh, pieces of ephemera into the top pocket and add maybe a larger journaling card or um, just uh, a few pieces of folded paper um, to the pocket at the bottom. We are now ready to glue this panel to the inside of our uh, front cover of the journal and when you are gluing it down to the cover, I suggest that you use some chipboard pieces on both the inside and the outside of the cover and hold them with the clips along the edges there till the glue gets fully dry. I have now removed the paper clips, checking out to see that everything glued down together good. And I think that now I can add some of the um, cards that I have created with the help of the dies that I had. And I used the pattern paper from the collection. I think this, as a matter of fact, completes our tutorial. There is one more thing that I wanted to do. Um, now when I know how long um, these ribbons that I used for the closure uh, really have to be, I think I will trim some of them, something like that maybe. And I have die cut four circles out of the a pink leather piece that I had um, left and 
I used the same piece here up the spine. So I'm just going to glue two of each of those pieces at the edge of the ribbon like so. I think it will look nice and of course it will match the color um, of my journal. And that will then complete our tutorial. I hope it gives you some ideas and thoughts on how you can use this gorgeous paper collection from Victoria Designs. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I will do my best, as usual, to get back to you with the answers. See you all soon. Happy crafting! Bye!